I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. I'd love to introduce you to a Kumu who just loves his heritage and wants to share it with as many as he can from Kupuna to Kiki. Let's welcome Kumu Kamaka Kona. And I'm just so excited. I've not met him live, but I've seen his work and I'm just uh, welcome. Welcome, Kamaka. Aloha, aloha. Thank you, Auntie Wendy. Okay, let's get started. So before we go and talk about the halals and your teaching, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, let's see. I was born and raised on the island of Maui. Um, and I moved to Oahu to become a boarder at Kamehameha at a young age. Uh, I went to the University of Hawaii. Um, studied fashion management, actually, and Hawaiian studies. Um, I've been, I returned home after graduation. I moved, to, I've been home about, I would say, 17 years now on Maui. Um, the Halau is going to be celebrating 20 years um, next year in 2003. Wow. So I've been teaching quite a while now. Um, wow. Exciting. Yeah, it's a lifelong career for you. It's probably just your lifestyle of who you are and who you've become. So everyone probably sees you on the street and say, hey, how's it Kumu, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe small, some don't small know town, even your that's name. why. Huh? Small town too in Maui, in Wailuku. Yeah, so. and good for you that you returned home. There's such great talent in Maui. And um, I think that's why everybody just retreats back to their homeland of Maui and I guess you get inspired because of the culture and the lands there, but I notice that a lot of great entertainers are residing and coming from Maui. And when you leave, you come back. So that's important. Yeah. Right? Yes, okay. absolutely. So, um, Gumu, what is the name of your halal and how long have you been teaching it um, under that name? Um, halal Okahanu Lehua, uh, which means the school in the breath of the Lehua blossom. Um, has been established. Well, actually, I became a kumuhula in 2003. Uh, I graduated through formal uniki rites from the lineage. My kumu is Mekamamalu Klein um, from the lineage of Mikey Ayu Lake. Um, and the halal actually opened in 2004. So I've been a kumu for 20 years. The halal is 19, 19 years old. Um, and we've seen... I would say anywhere between coming th in 20 years, coming through the door between a thousand and two thousand students wow. um, in that 20 year history. Yeah. Wow. How amazing is that? Like any teacher, you know, seeing uh, the different ages, the generations, and I'm sure uh, if it's 20 years plus, you've probably seen some keiki rise up and then had, uh, do they come back with their children and their family as well? Yep. It's a cycle huh? of life. It, 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 repeat, history repeats itself. It yes. does. Oh, that means you must be good. Huh? They keep coming back to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I know. I see some people, uh, some of your students in uh, in your group that I recognize. So I know, and I hear only good things. So oh, um, I awesome. know you must be an amazing kumu, and so proud of uh, having to share your journey with us today. So I wanted to ask you, what is the age range of students that are currently enrolled? Uh, the youngest right now, I think, and we don't normally take a three-year-old, <laughs> but I do believe that we did make an exception. So the youngest baby right now is three, almost four. Wow. Uh, normally, we'll, we'll, we'll require them to be have reached four years old before they start. Um, but three is the youngest currently. And... Um, Auntie Patsy Saki is 90. She just celebrated her 90, actually her 91st birthday. Wow. And I know um, we have a photo of her individually that will show at the, oh, there she is. Amazing. And she looks an epitome of health. And I know a lot has to do with what she's doing daily in the, in the teaching and the dancing of hula. So we're going to get through all of that because it's so, so important. So again, we're going to ask you, how does hula contribute to a person's health? and well-being at each stage of their lives? Well, you know, I, I think that for the most part, people, when people come to hula, 
they um, they know that they're going to learn the fundamentals of dancing. Yes. So number one, the moving their body, moving your body is a, is a given. You know that you're going to have to move your body in hula. Yes. So when you make that a lifelong habit at an early age, mm -hmm. it kind of, you know, it helps your body throughout your days, throughout your life, actually, yeah. in other things. You know, in sport, it helps in sports. I say I complain because sometimes I these um these little keiki come to hula and they become really really good dancers, physical dancers, and then they say, okay, I want to try volleyball now. And I'm like, no, because I know that they're going to become good volleyball players too. You yes. know, so, um, hula dancers make excellent. Uh, you know, athlete, um, as athletes. Athletes, yes, but for I don't, sure. But I, I don't, I don't see it the other way around because when I <laughs> yeah. get to them oh, yeah. <laughs> as a sports person and then they try hula, it's awkward. Oh, for sure, um, for sure. <laughs> uh, that that be me, okay? <laughs> no can, no can. It, yeah, it only goes one way, for sure, for yeah, sure. And, and, and so it, 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 the the physical aspect <laughs> of of always moving and and your body always exercising weekly, week in and week out, it becomes a good um, function, yeah. a good habit. You know, and I can really see that because um, I used to dance hula as a keiki, and then that happened to me, right? I went jump the fence, I went the other the other way. But but do you know that when we, even when we clean house, you know, the oh, anybody, when they clean house, once you're a hula dancer, so you're not just sweeping, you're like sweeping and moving, you know? You incorporate <laughs> hula, into your yeah. daily lifestyle and then instead of just sweeping like this now you're incorporating the moves so you're burning more calories yeah. you're becoming more physical because now yeah. you're incorporating so exactly i can see the correlation between uh longevity and hula right there i mean so so right there so how do you encourage a healthy lifestyle for your dancers well uh, you know i do i i do from a very young age I tell them that, you know, Kumu doesn't smoke um, and I don't condone it. And so I kind of nonchalantly put that in these young kids' ears. So if I catch you guys and I see you guys in public, you know, I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. That's good. Um, so that, that, you know, that's, that's, that's one, of the, one of the things that the kids, they, from very early on, like, oh, Kumu doesn't want, no, no smoking kids. Yeah. That's out. Um, but another thing too is i do um i do encourage that they go to the you know go out to the beach and make go hiking because yes. we gotta pick our lace our you know our ferns and our foliage and so i do encourage them to go hiking too up to el valley and stuff like that um and we we kind of implement it in class so that um their ma'a, their, or their familiar, how to do that yes. on their own time. Right. Um, and so it's something that they voluntarily want to do. Right. Um, those are several of examples in which um, I try to expand their, not just hula in, you know, dancing in the class, but right. other things. Uh, but lifestyle choices. And, you know, we all yeah. know um, um, children respond to friends and people of influence like yourself. So you actually have more power than a lot of their parents because if Kumu says not to smoke, if Kumu <laughs> says you're going hiking because we got to pay, they're going to listen because they're under instruction. But when parents try to tell them this, you know, as well as I do, you know, it doesn't, re doesn't happen as readily and as easily because the respect for our Kumu is so re re reverent. So yes, you have all the power in your hand, Kumu, and I'm so glad that you're encouraging the right choices like that and continue that. That's powerful. Yeah, mahalo, mahalo. And then um, what about diet? You know, I know the physical part about it, but what about the diet of your dancers? Does that well, matter? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it does. And, then, and yet, you know, so that for the longest time, I was in the best shape of my life. It's only when... I turned 40 and it yeah. was difficult <laughs> to upkeep, you know, like the small waistline. 
<laughs> like from 40 years old, I just, I was like, everything went downhill. Yes. So even though, you know, Como is not looking so fit anymore. <laughs> I, I do um, stress to the, to the, the students that when, you know, eating the right things, what you put in your body is going to help you have stamina and endurance and power when you're dancing. Um, and it also is going to not clog your brains so that you can also think clearly and and process the, the stories too because they still got to uh, translate right. and they still got to memorize all of the storyline, the melee right. Right. and all of that other stuff too. So, um, you know, I do and, and, and I see I, some of the kids, these young kids, they, I don't know, they picked up these this bad Starbucks habit mm -hmm. still early on when they come yes. the parents come to drop them off to hula yeah. and I see the the mocha or like the, the Starbucks frappuccinos yeah. yes. and like it's you know that that really is not good it's packed yes. up with sugar and amen look at you like, yeah and so you know you have all the power to make that part of your oh yeah Kumu doesn't yeah. want us to spend money on you know um sweet coffee drinks because it's not a natural way. It's not the Hawaiian way. It's yeah. not a natural diet and intake. So yes, if that's what you want to implement, Kumu, for sure, I, I applaud you for that. And you know, the fact that you turned 40 <laughs> and you know that the vision becomes less and you know, you got to stretch your hand farther away. Yeah. The weight well, stays on, doesn't now, come off, right? Now, now, at, now at 45, <laughs> I can, sometimes I wake up and I feel tingles in my feet and I'm like, <laughs> Oh no. Oh, like, no. Yeah. Thought, like, and and let me tell you. It doesn't get better. Kumo, it's starting younger. Like at my age and at your age, it was 40. But for the keiki coming up, they're going to feel these aches and pains probably in their 35s and then soon enough, the 30s. So you see, because of the, the breakdown of diet. So, yeah. yes, you have a right to uh, advise and control them because you know through your experience at 40 things change so imagine 35 and imagine 30 so yes and encourage and then live by and share by experience because what your experience is for real true it's, it is it is what it is so okay yeah. so do you think that young children are cakey become better individuals in their teens and eventually in their adulthood because of the lessons and rigorous training in of being in a hula halau I, I do believe it makes yes. a difference. Um, yes. Well, just at the base level, like I was saying, physically speaking, they're gonna be they're gonna be controlled to know a certain thing, and it's repetition, and it's mm -hmm. commitment, and those first off those things when you grow up, knowing to, how to be committed to a an activity, a sport. Mm -hmm. And then you commit your time and your your you know your energy and your loyalty to that sport. It becomes a passion. Yes. Then it wipes out all the other possible bad things that these kids could be possibly doing on the street. Yes. You know, yes. um, when you're, I, I believe when I have them here at the halal, the more I have them in the studio, the less they are doing other things all around. You know, wherever yes. it might be. Um, yes. I cannot control social media and I cannot control the fact that their parents let them have their own, you know, phone, smartphones. Because mm -hmm. that kind of just threw a whole wrench into this scheme of life that as Islanders, we're, you know, we're kind of special in that we grow up in a certain way and we're raised, you know, to go to the beach, play outside and 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 having these tech, having technology nowadays, it kind of just dampened the whole structure of even halal because now right. they're on their instead of hula sisters um, kind of mingling and and you know just laughing and now they're just they sit and wait on their phones you know so it's a different it's a different animal right now but I do believe that they still become better um, thinkers and better choice makers and um and all around better well-rounded uh human beings because of the things that 
we, you know, we teach and we instill in the halal and it's not just hula. It's right. really not just hula, it's life lessons. Right, and you know, Kumu, you actually have total control over this. So, you know, like uh, you can make the rules, right? When you enter into the studio, you know, all phones aside, yeah. you guys sit there, you yeah. talk story, you practice. Yeah. You find out what's what's Sally, what's Kehal doing, you know, and you guys talk story. And when I Kumu walks in the room, no phones, no yeah. social media, yeah. and you know, make the rule, bro. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Don't teach you know, you know, you know, go there, you go for it. Oh. And even the ninety-two year old, you make the rule. She no can go on the social media too because Kumu <laughs> said, and the respect from you. I mean, that's that's the whole teaching right there is a the respect. So yeah, whatever uh -huh. you're teaching in your studio, um, that's exactly who they are. So the more discipline and guidance they get, then that's well who they become. And so, yes. that's, I, and that's yeah. why I see your people and I meet with them and I, I just love it because I know that you have that sense of discipline, which a lot of us lack. And so they're going to look yeah. to you for that. So you're yeah. not only the Kumu, you're the Papa, you're the best friend, you're yeah. the disciplinarian, right? Yeah. So take advantage of that opportunity that you can mold and shape the futures in these keikis, as well as even the kupuna, we can learn yes. a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, and right? especially those that come from unstable homes. Yes. Like halal for them, this yes. is stable, you know, yes. because if something's yeah. to come week in and week out, and they know what they, they know who they're dealing with, Yeah. and they know what their kuleana is here, uh, and I think that sometimes certain cycles don't end up not repeating themselves yes. in family structures because that particular child, and I've seen it, I've, you know, in 20 years, I've seen a lot of things mm. and, and I've seen where, you know, I get the lucky charm student of the fam, um, you know, child of the family yeah. that didn't have such great uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. And she, be, she went on to become a doctor. Amen. And now she's, you know, like she's in Salt Lake City doing her oh. um, service to, you know, her church and, and give her a and shout out, has, call out her name. Yeah. <laughs> call them out, call them out, you know, that's an accomplishment, good for her, many more stories like that coming out yeah. of you, you know, and, that's what and, we want to boast about, yeah, yeah, it does, it, it, it does help when they're here, it does, it um, does, wow, and, and so I know that you feel that hula is a key to longevity of life, both physically and mentally, I mean, right there, you just nailed it, and yes, it, it is, yeah, and that's what you want to believe, and that's what you want to instill in all these kiki as well as the kupuna. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I and I think they understand the fact that um when they now when when, when they come to halal, okay, they're not just dancing now. You are culturally yes. immersed in everything. Yes. Hula. Yeah. So when you get uh um, when we learn a new song, a new mele, they're gonna have to translate. So, I mean, they're going to get the words, of course, but they're going to have to memorize the words and, you know, look up certain words to to make it stick in your head. Because hula is really about the story. So yes. they're challenging their mental capacity as well as their physical. Because you got to not only re remember choreography, you got to remember the words to the song. You got to remember what they mean. And you got to remember why Kumu chose those that choreography to represent that song. So you, all kind of functions yeah. are being challenged. Yeah. And I that's I to me, I, I think that's what's keeping my kupuna going so long. Amen, so, for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Challenged every week, every week at 5 p.m. Monday afternoon, Tuesday yeah. afternoon. They look forward to it. That's yeah. probably the highlight of their lives because their brains are stimulated. Like you said, yeah. they're being challenged yeah. mentally, physically, you know, and then they get to socialize with people that they love and they get yeah. to see you, you know, and, and, uh, and show them, show you the love and respect that you show them. So it's all, you know, back and forth. So you're in a good position. <laughs> no, no one that you hello, for a long hello. time. Yeah, the, joke is, the joke is that, um, Auntie Patsy, Mrs. Saki, she's uh -huh. my new one. She's still the carpool driver. So she, oh. she's still there. The DMV when renew her license. <laughs> oh. But so you know she what? Actually, she picks up four other kupuna before they come to hula. And <laughs> so this last one. one, she told she told me, Kumu, <laughs> she called me Kumu-san. Kumu-san, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to come hula anymore because I don't know if they're going to um, renew my license. <laughs> And they renewed her license. Oh, well, she's capable, right? She's probably more <laughs> capable but, than most of the young drivers on it because she's very alert, right? That's because her training, when you train her in class. <laughs> so I said, well, you know, if I got to pick you up, I will. She goes, well, you got to pick me up. And the four other ladies, too, because I picked <laughs> them up. Said, okay, okay, I pick all five of you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so funny, so cute. Those are the kinds of stories I love to hear. You know, that's what keeps us young, the laughter and just that joy that they create, you know, and that's that's what the, the years of on us have, yeah, that these young people have to create and, and build in their into their who they are and their mana because they don't have such great enduring stories like this yet. They're yeah, being created. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do to keep students interested in hula? You know, some of them they come, they like learn and then Maybe it's not for them, or how do you keep them interested? Or once it becomes a fashion, um, how long do they normally stay in a in in your or in a halal? Uh, well, you know, right now, the longest hamana has been with me seventeen years. <laughs> um, my mom, before she passed, she would have been the longest. Wow, she would have been my student for all twenty years. Wow. Um, but she passed away right before the pandemic. I know, oh, um, sorry. And so, you know, one thing that um, I noticed is you have to have goals because, you know, they come, they don't really know about hula. Mm -hmm. Then they start learning hula. Then yes. they become a little better and a little better. Yes. Then they want to do something with that. So I've had to actively think of ways to put make goals for them so one goal years ago we wanted to enter a competition mm -hmm. you know um take you a competition so we got put on a wait list yes and then a couple years later they said okay let's bring your kiki well the kiki eventually grew you know yeah. we were able invited to kiki hula competition so that was one vehicle in which it motivates them to get better to stay um, and even, you know, want to grow up and do Merry Monarch. Mm. So in the, in the span of years, so many years, we were fortunate enough that we are, you know, participants in Merry Monarch Festival. Wow. A lot of the original girls that were in my Kiki Hula line, they're yes. now the main dancers in my Merry Monarch line. Wow. Um, and then like. So that's the goal. There's goals yes. that you gotta make. And yeah. then for like the older ones, they'll tell you, Kumo, I don't wanna, I don't like dance in public. I just need, I, I want exercise and socialize, but I don't like perform. You yes. know, sooner or later, when they become comfortable enough, they say, okay, we'll go try, we'll go dance. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go to the, you know, like they're gonna have, oh, I was like, okay, we have a small little function at the mall. Anybody wanna dance? They raise their hand. <laughs> Um, and so it's it's just a way of how you how a kumuhula uh, can deal and see the certain ages and yes. deal with each case by case basis according to their ages. And wow. I've been able to figure that out throughout this this twenty years. Wow. And so the the average lifespan of a student here is anywhere between twelve to fifteen years. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And, That's you know, so wonderful. It's very, very um, heartwarming when I see my young girls, they, you know, they go off, they graduate, they come home, they have a baby, and then they come back to Hula, and then they bring their baby back to Hula. Wow. It's happened twice already. So. That's, That's the best, the generation. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, you know, I know that there are many types of Hula. So what type of Hula are age appropriate and dance appropriate for certain age ranges? Well. We like to, I, I kind of don't like to pressure. So there's the kahiko and I, I may mainly reserve that for the, from the, the, the opio, the little, the keiki age up to the Mary Monarch level. Then once you makuahine and you get into the gracious ladies and kupuna, I don't expect them to do kahiko. 
um, and they just do awana more, you know, more easy on their knees and easier to to MacGyver through their dances. <laughs> um, but it's 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 kind of like if you're anywhere between seven years old and twenty five to thirty, you'll still be doing kahiko dances um, along with the awana. Um, then after, you know, after 35, I say, ah, you go to gracious ladies, you know, you, and you go with the older ones and then I, I'm not so picky and I'm not so hard on them. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just there for just the, the love of dance. Yeah. And, yeah just, and the love of their hula sisters. Yes. And allow, you know. Yes. And actually, it almost sounds like a blue zone environment, you know, where the kupuna, the keiki, intergenerational exchange, and the, the, the kupuna gets life and energy from the keiki, and the keiki gets yeah. wisdom and life from the yeah. kupuna. So, yeah. so important that community that you have those age, you know, the vast ranges of age. And so I think so important, you know, and then getting back to Mrs. Psyche at 92 years old, um, that's, uh, how long did you say she was dancing with you again? Uh, it's going to be about 15 years come wow. this October. And she's a local resident from Maui? or Yeah, she's lived Kahului, Maui all her life. <laughs> um, and when she came, she just came on a whim with, um, they were walking from, our old halal used to be by um, uh, 24 Hour Fitness. Uh -huh. And... Uh, you would have to pass in the hallway and our halal, you know, so they would go to silver sneakers. Oh. And then they came, a bunch of them, then they all started together at the same time. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And she came and she stayed and she'll always be there. I mean, I just saw that picture and I thought, well, how adorable. But, and they're um, the reasons why I'm fat because they bring me dinner every yeah, week. And that's a good part too, good and bad, right? Make Ono sure cookies. that Kumu is fed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So Kumu, we run out of time for today. So I just want to say mahalo to Kumu Kamaka Kukona for his passion of hula. And everybody remember now that hula is the heartbeat and the secret, the secret to long life. So if you didn't start, Sign up now and you can go to the websites and find out where he is if you're on Maui and get together with that group and, and go yourself at long, long, long life and health, a healthy long life, I should say. So we'll be back in two weeks with more of Taking Your Health Back. So mahalo, kumu kamaka kukona. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.